Is there a trade-off about what you can actually teach if you teach with projects? Because these things take forever, right? And kids will, if you give a kid two days, they will take every single minute, you know? And then all of a sudden, like, oh, I thought I was going to cover all this content, and now, oh, you know? And so we had to make a conscious decision that we are not going to teach the whole book. It's just not going to happen. And we had to just accept that our kids were maybe not even going to pass the state test, which is kind of a weird thing to say about a math curriculum. I mean, isn't the whole goal of the math curriculum to get the kids to pass the test? Well, what we decided to do was to not, is to focus on getting kids to pass the work samples, right? And you guys are familiar with the work samples because those work samples require numeracy, grit, problem solving, modeling, all this kind of stuff. So we basically said, all right, we feel like the state gave us two targets and we just picked one and we're going for the work sample target. This is how I think maybe people could see this. This is what you guys need to do as teachers. You have to instruct, you have to assess, and then these guys need lots of practice, you know, and they need the drills, they need the skills. You have to have proficiency, you know, that's kind of the big thing right now. And, uh, but you also have to assess, oh, did I get that? You also have to do the state test, right? And then you got to do all these projects, like where are you going to do all these projects, you know? Like, how is that going to work? And, um, and what about, has anybody heard this term, is this kind of bubbling around? performance assessment, you know, like that real world common core math performance assessment kind of stuff. I and mean, not to mention, it has to, of course, meet the common core, right? So like, how are you going to do all that stuff in one year? You can't, really, if they're all separate. You just cannot do it. So we're like, okay, I think we can just choose, pick and choose the content, and we are instead going to do this. We're going to say, projects. Through projects, we're going to teach content. To support the projects, we're going to drill them on the basic skills. We're not going to give them any tests. We're just going to test them on their projects. The Common Core requires kids be able to think logically and use these deeper problem-solving skills. This is what the Common Core is trying to get at, you know, instead of a mile wide and an inch deep. So that addresses the Common Core. And what about the state test? Well, pretty much what we do, every single project, we staple on top of it the state scoring guide for work samples. And every project is a state test. Every single one, every test in my class is a state test, every project is a state test. And so when we give them the official one, they're like, ah, another one. They, they don't even see the difference. Like, our class is nothing but state work samples. So when they get to what we call the, the test, they don't even blink. Draw it out, and we have a format. We just teach them to communicate. So for instance, this is a this was the final project, or the final product of the class. They were given a string link. Oh, this is the string one. And they had to create a formula, a mathematical model, to make this shape. They had to talk about what they did. They had to demonstrate the math. They had to communicate their method. They had to show their math model and their final product. And these two girls, I saved this one because of the handwriting, they just said, they stood up here and together they said, this is my model, these are the values I picked, this is what I did, bam, bam, bam. And I could have just as well like taken a state rubric and just stapled it right on here and this would have been a pass. But it was just an assignment. So the idea is that rather than considering all of these things as separate, they are really, we're just going to go ahead and write work sample on top of this. And it's the common core, you know? So pretty much what we did is they said, we can't do it all. We're just going to do one thing, and that one thing has to incorporate everything. And that's how we can do it. Otherwise, there's no way to teach out of the book and do any kind of meaningful projects and have any time left in your year. It's just, you can't do it. At least we didn't discover a way to do it. 
And not only that, I mean, we, we're pushing the envelope for work samples. The deal is, is that the state is allowing, I don't know if you guys are aware, the state allows high schools to write their own work samples, right? So then, and they're changing that now. Mr. Zublin over there is like really involved in that. And so, but basically what that allows you to do is to like write a work sample, submit it to an official who is representing the state. He looks it over and says, yes, here's the content. This looks good. I think it um, has enough uh, rigor. Let's go ahead and use it. And you can suddenly teach to the test. But it's a because it's like this deep problem solving that you're already teaching to and like bam it just goes right on top of this like you're creating the work samples the state is looking at them and going yes that looks good you can create a whole series of state work samples so by the time a kid's a senior they'll have taken like 16 state tests like they're going to pass two of those by golly and it's fun and it's easy and well it's not easy it's fun and the kids come away with kind of a deep learning so that's, that is basically how we're addressing the comp and state testing is we're just doing it all in one. They're individual tests, calculators or cell phones away, like, okay, there's a test this time, guys, seriously, you know, individuals, you know. But the thing is, is that they don't really perceive the difference because they've already seen that work sample. They've already done the whole state thing. We grade them on that all the time. They're like, it's all work samples. We submit it to the state. Lane ESD. Yeah, and they, they assess it. So, but I also give them scores on it. It's like, I don't care if this is a state test or not, it's a test in my class and you have to do it because it's an assignment. It's your test for this whole unit. But, and I do not want to talk about work samples very much, okay, because I don't like them. I like them because they fit with, you know, what we like to do, but that's it. So, um, so as a result, um, now the teachers are all going to be allowed to put in work samples, have them checked by the state and create a work sample bank created by teachers, which in my opinion should be you guys. And you should make work samples that fit the projects that you want to teach. So even though, Bill, you're in CTE, you could actually come up with a really cool project. Kids could do it, they could do a work sample, and they could pass a math work sample in your class. But this is so different right. that we basically start them and just build them up as like junior problem solving rangers, you know, over time. They, t they do an intake assessment and we're like, all right, I think you're gonna move on to Math 95 or whatever, yeah.